Hello guys and welcome to a new Still Division video today by me Vulcan. Today I have a few game one in a best of three between Neff and Thrace TW and this is round three of the Great Paradox Tourney. So if we look at how both these players got here, Neff defeated Rust in round one 2-0, then defeated Chicken Jew in round two in 2-0 two and um, I've been very impressed with Neff's play around his 17th SS Panzergrenadier division using the Stoss Troop and the Smoke very effectively indeed. That was a joy to watch in the earlier games. Thrace TW on the other hand has uh, taken on Alex of Nooski in round 1 and won 2-1 in a full 3 games which was uh, interesting to see. And then in round 2 uh, he took on Fanaris and defeated him 2-0. Those games, however, are not available on the channel uh, due to the replays being unavailable. So not sure how challenging those games were for Thrace TW, but he broke through nonetheless to round three, where he's now up against Neff. Now Neff, I have a lot of faith in him. I think he's been playing very, very well throughout the tournament. Thrace, however, does definitely have a chance here uh, with a very interesting map division combination for both players. So the map is Colville today, which is a relatively even map in my opinion. Um, then we have the 4th Armoured for Neff versus the 9th Panzer for Thrace TW. Now this matchup however is not as even. They're both DLC divisions. The 4th Armoured though is very good against the 9th Panzer and I think the 9th Panzer in general suffers quite badly against American Armoured Divisions uh, due to things like M4 Shermans really messing with their punching power that involves, you know, Befell Panzer IIs, uh, Panzer II Looks, and the Panzer one c combination. Now Thrace DW does have access to these Marder threes, and he is going to be bringing in one at the start of the game. So that could pay off versus things like the Hellcats that are going to be coming out of Neff. But uh, still, if those Marders end up going down, there's not much to stop Neff from rolling over Thrace TW with the uh, Abrams and uh, other M4s. So here is Abrams, one of the uh, ace units. It's a 75mm Sherman. And basically that will do work against the Panzer 1 Cs, Panzer 2 Looks, in the early game unless uh, Neff gets careless allows the Panzer II looks to find like a side shot at close range or something but either way Neff gonna be using rifles in the bottom side M3A1 half track there it's got the 50 cal and the armored LMG rifles I'm assuming rifles bazooka combo to the mid looks like a rifles bazooka combo to the top side recon there in that bunker to provide information armored leader to the mid to provide command for the M18 Hellcat. So it looks like Neff's kind of prioritizing the command here. However, it'd probably be better off just having the armored leader have a follow order onto the M18 Hellcat as it does take the first shot against the Panzer 1C up here. A Panzer 1C going to be able to get out of range by the looks of things. Infantry arriving on the bottom side for Thrace TW. He's chosen the Sturm Pioneer Pioneer Führer combo with the SP, SDKFZ 251.9, which has a 6 AP and the 9 HE main gun. There's also another half track there accompanied by the Panzer II Lux. Panzer 1C also making ground on the bottom side. Small engagement between the M18 Hellcat and the Marder 3 here. Both fired what well, looks like one shot at each other and missed. So relatively even engagement in the open there. If either hit each other they would probably get a penetrating hit and maybe do some damage. Um, M4 Abrams that's going to be engaging the uh, SDKFZ 251.9. Oh first shot gets the tracks destroyed and it looks like the 50 cal's finished the job. That is a very dead 251.9. And currently this Panzer 1C however is making ground on the bottom side for Thrace. Plus one in his favour. Panzer II looks nearly finding the armoured LMG rifles there, but not quite. Up on this top side, rifles engaging the Panzergrenz. 
These rifles have a very high strength advantage over the Panzer Grenadiers at that range and also have a decent amount of HE as well. 8 HE versus the Panzer Grenadiers 5. So Neff's rifle is going to be winning out at that range. The Panzer 1C is trying to get into position there to help out. However, will end up going into the 200 meter range of the bazooka if he's not too careful. Neff has identified that, moves forwards the bazooka to take a shot, forces the Panzer 1C to fall back. Panzer Grenadiers currently dead. <laughs> so pack 38 up there, the only real thing that's stopping the frontline cup from collapsing, especially as the bazooka actually finds a second shot onto the Panzer 1C, finds the internal fragments, and it looks like this Panzer 1C might actually be surrounded, so it will continue to fall back until it finds friendly territory once again, and uh, that's going to be very hard for Thrace to deal with on that top side. Panzer 1C finds uh, shots onto the rifles in the mid, Marder 1 also firing into that engagement. ME109 G2 BR21 coming up. That's going to be going for the rockets onto the Hellcat by the looks of things. Honestly, that's a pretty good choice of target for the ME109 G2 BR21 because the Hellcat is open top. So that HE from those rockets can definitely kill off a Hellcat. In the middle of the map, Panzer 1C finds its range into um, or finds its way into the range of a bazooka. The bazooka squad very close. To firing a second shot. Panzer 1C has not fallen back far enough and is going to be killed off. ME109 is flying about. Cavalry scouts find their way into this tree line and kill off the Panzer 2 looks. And well, there goes the Panzer 1C as the M18 Hellcat reinforces and comes down and takes that out. So a lot of armor lost for Thrace TW at the start of the game here. We see the Panzer 2 looks die. We've had the Panzer 1Cs die pretty much across the board. There is one here that is still falling back as the bazooka chases it down. And this Panzer 1C is going to be solely responsible for keeping that Panzer 1C alive. Now we see the uh, B-26B Marauder coming in. Looks like that strafed to death. The Sturm Pioneers that were facing off against the armoured LMG rifles. It's also going to be strafing the Panzer 1C as that advances onto the rifles and bazooka combo on the top side. But, of course, we still have these Hellcats around and Neff is microing them very well indeed. And currently avoiding the engagement with the Marder 3 entirely and using the M18s to kill off units where Thrace can't fight back. Like, Thrace doesn't have the mobility that Neff does with his Hellcats. And Neff is making fantastic use of this at the moment, moving them all over the map to find the kills onto the lighter armor that the Hellcat can basically kill without anything being fired back upon them. Armin LMG Rifles has moved up here taking on the Pioneer Führer. Half track however is going to be able to uh, prevent uh, the Armin LMG Rifles there from doing too much damage for now. However Cavalry Scouts if they find their 200 meter range might be able to kill off the half track. It's going to be up to Neff to spot that and make sure that the uh, micro happens there. Or Thrace DW can just move up his uh, half track into range and get it blown up by the bazooka. So that's a bit of a shame there. Thrace TW should have known that the cavalry scouts were there I feel because the cavalry scouts killed his Panzer II looks before unless he thought that they got killed by something else like the M18 Hellcat. Pack 38 was killed off. Recon I believe spotted that and then the Hellcat took its HE shots to make things happen. B26B Marauder can be strafing the Marder 3. Now this is something that's quite interesting because B26B actually has a good chance of killing the Marder 3. It's happened to me multiple times before. Quick little surrender there though. Thrace TW's Panzergren surrender the rifles out of Neff and also kill off the recon squad. But uh, after a very short game, 6 minutes and 52 seconds, Thrace TW is going to surrender and that is going to be victory for Neff. Neff finding the 435 kills to 95 losses in that short amount of time was uh, convincingly winning at that point. However, I'm rather disappointed that Thrace TW gave up as soon as he did. Because generally, you know, you want to be playing out these games just so that you don't give 
your opponent such a big morale boost going into the second game. Uh, because if, for example, you know they do really well in, in, in sort of the early game and you just surrender to them just straight off the bat, that person who just beat you that quickly is going to be even better in a second game based on their own confidence. So what you want to be doing, just like mind games, is just like drag the game out, you know, just play it to, to its very end. Not only does it give you a chance to bring things back and win possibly, but it also, you know, drains the other player. It doesn't allow them to have that boost. They know that they've won and they'll know that they've won for so long. And I think there's like a name for it, um, but basically it's sort of like like victory denial, I think it's called. It's really demoralizing for the victor. If they know that they've won for such a long time, but you don't give them the victory, like that is really horrible. And it allows you to, you know, maybe play off that in the second game. Didn't matter in this best of three, however, as I can reveal that after only the one game, Thrace TW did give the best of three over to Neff. So we are not going to be seeing another game in this best of three series, which is a shame, but uh, there we go. Thrace, uh, I guess, felt like he was outplayed or maybe just didn't want to continue in the tournament. Could have been any matter of reason, any manner of reasons, sorry. So, you know, you never know. But uh, either way, um, victory to Neff is going to be moving on to the semi finals in the Great Paradox Tourney. Honestly, I feel like Neff. Um, going into this was a better player and um, definitely proved it in this game uh, came out very strong and uh, defeated Thrace in a very solid amount of time <laughs> so an easy round for him going to be moving on uh, his opponent is yet to be decided um, so we have one more best of three in round three to go through and uh, then we can look at the semi-finals, which should be very, very fun to watch indeed. Hopefully, you know, a bit longer games and a bit more sort of contention throughout. Kills and losses. Yeah, pretty standard for such a short game. But anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.